In this next series of lectures, we're going to take a look at the relationship between relations and partitions. And to start off, um, let's say and we start off with a set, just just like our discussion of relations right, always has. And let's assume that this set has a partition. All right, so visually, right, if I just kind of sketch something for this, remember what it means for someone to be a partition. It means there are these sets that break up the entire set, right? Their union is equal to the entire set, and they are mutually disjoint. No two of them overlap each other. Then my claim here, and we're actually going to prove this in a minute, my claim here is that this partition induces a relation on the set right and the way we define this relation is two elements are related if and only if there is a set in the partition such that both x and y are in that set right so if we have two points here these two points would be related these two points here would be related these two points, Y and A, they wouldn't be because they're in different elements of the partition. So I have an example here for us to look at. Right, I have this collection of sets here. And these A sub I are a partition of the positive real numbers. And I think before we jump in and start trying to show that uh, the induced relation has these three properties it helps to kind of try to visualize what we're looking at here so if uh, i is zero then a sub zero starts at zero goes up to one includes the left end point but not the right so that's a sub zero a sub one starts at one and goes up to two a sub 2 starts at 2 and goes up to 3, etc. So once we've got the picture here, I think it, it's pretty clear uh, these sets are mutually disjoint. They don't map anywhere, uh, including their endpoints. And their union, as n goes out to infinity, is going to be the entire positive real numbers. All right, so what I want to do is show that the relation induced by this partition has these three properties that it's, it's both reflexive symmetric and transitive all right so let's start with the reflexive property all right so i'm going to start by saying let x be a positive real number take some random x out of this set here all right because this is a partition, right? Remember that that means that these sets are, that these a sub i are mutually disjoint, right? So let x be an element of, of the positive real numbers, then there exists an i on this, that's on the natural numbers, such that x is an element of a sub i. What what is that i? It, it, it take x when we're talking about the floor and ceiling functions, right? Take the floor of x and the ceiling of x. That'll be uh, the unit interval here that x is going to be in. Okay, because the a sub i are mutually disjoint. x is not an element of a sub j for j not equal to i. In other words, it can't be in any other set in the partition, right? Therefore, x is related to itself. All right, so that's the first one. Right? That's uh, the reflexive property. How about the symmetric property? Remember how we do this, right? 
Um, let X and Y be elements of, uh, be positive real numbers such that X is related to Y. Well, what does this mean, right? Well, by the definition of our relation, the definition of R, there exists an I in natural numbers, zero up to infinity, such that uh, X and Y are an element of A sub I. Well, if X and, if X and Y are in this uh, member of the partition, then Y and X are a member of the partition, right? So therefore, y is related to x, which is what we needed to see, right? Therefore, the relation is symmetric. All right, so how about, see if I can squeeze this in down here. How about transitivity? Now, as usual, this is kind of the trickiest one of the lot. So we, we need to take uh, three values out of the positive real numbers. So let x, y, and z be positive real numbers such that x is related to y and y is related to z. Well, again, right, there exists i such that x and y are in a sub i. And, and here's, where, here's where it gets a little tricky, right? How do we know that Z is in A sub I. Maybe Z is in, in, in another one, right? So let, let's say and Y and Z are in A sub J. All right, so what I need to show is that I and J are, in fact, the same, right? And, and here's how we do that. We're going to do this uh, by contradiction. If I is not equal to J, then... Uh, y is in two different sets in the partition which it can't be since a sub i intersection a sub j is the empty set. The, these sets are mutually disjoint, right? That contradicts, uh, for that to be true, that would contradict the definition of a partition. Therefore, I is equal to J and X is also related to Z, which is what we needed to show. Okay, so now on the next, um, on the next slide, um, now, now that we've, we've seen this for a specific example, on the next slide, I'm going to I'm going to prove that this is true not just for this partition but for all partitions. All right, and the reason I wanted to go through this first is the proof of this in the general case is going to follow the exact same kind of reasoning for each of these three properties. So I've got the general statement here, right? Let A be a set with a partition. And let R be the relation induced by the partition. All right. So then this relation I'm going to I'm going to show is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So first, I, I need to be able to talk about this partition in more detail. So let a sub one, a sub two, uh, so on. Maybe this ends. Maybe this is finite. Maybe it's not. Our last one, right? Uh, my previous example, the partition was actually infinite. It's not going to make a difference either way. So let these a sub i be a partition of a. Right? Then remember what this means. Then we have uh, two things going on. Then the union of the a sub i is equal to a and for every uh, pair of indices where the two indices are different, 
a sub i intersection a sub j is the empty set. Right? First one is just says uh, the union of the of the partition elements is the original set. Second part there says the individual sets are mutually disjoint. Okay, so I got to show reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. All right, so how do we show that this is reflexive? All right, pick X, right? Let X be an element of A. Since the A sub I are a partition, there exists an I in the natural numbers such that X is an element of A sub I. Well, if it's in there, then it's in there, right? Therefore, X is related to itself. All right, so that's uh, reflexive. How about symmetric? All right, so let's let's start off here. Let x comma y be an element of A, and uh, x is related to y. By the definition of the relation, there exists an I such that x comma y are in that a sub i. Well, if x comma y are in there, then y comma x are in there. We order we list we the order that we list them doesn't matter. So y is related to x. And I'm out of room. And that's okay because I planned ahead for this one. Uh, this is the, this is the same theorem. Right, it's just the statement of the theorem again, but uh, I, I put a copy of the slide in here because I knew I was going to need a little extra room for this one. So now we need to show uh, transitivity. So how, how are we going to start? Well, we're going to do, first I'm going to label it transitive, show the transitive property. Let X, Y, and Z be an element of A such that X is related to Y, and Y is related to Z. Again, by the definition of R, there exist numbers, natural numbers, I and J, such that X and Y are in A sub I, and Y comma Z are in a sub j. And just like we did with, with my specific example, we need to show that i and j are equal. All right, so assume they aren't. If i is not equal to j, then x, uh, excuse me, not x, y is an element of a sub i and a sub j, but a sub i intersection a sub j is empty, right? Because the a sub j are come from a partition, right? And there's our contradiction, right? This this y can't be in both sets if there is nothing that is in both sets. Therefore, i is equal to j, and x is related to z which is what we needed to show. And that's the third property, right? So now we've shown all three of these, right? So anytime you have a partition on a set, you just kind of get a relation for free. So in the next lecture, we're going to look at a special kind of relation. It's called an equivalence relation. And as you'll see in the lecture after that, um, this is kind of a two-way street. A partition can induce a relation, and sometimes a relation can also induce a partition.